In this video, I would like to show you how to set up your local XM Cloud development environment using Docker containers. We will initialize and start the Docker containers as well as use Sitecore Serialize to pull items from the remote XM Cloud instance first to our local repository and second push everything into the local XM Cloud environment. Following this introduction, you will be able to start your XM Cloud development. What you can see here is the solution we cloned during the environment creation process. You can see that in the first video of the XM Cloud introduction series, where we set up our first SXA site in XM Cloud. To start customizing the solution, we want to run it locally. I've downloaded the solution from GitHub to my local already, and I want to run it in Docker containers. The solution contains already the Docker Compose files. As to be read in the readme that has been copied initially, I need to run the init script, first passing the path to my Sitecore license file, as well as specifying the Sitecore authoring password. Next, I need to run the up script to start my containers. In Visual Studio Code, I've opened the terminal and navigated into my solution folder. From here, I can start the init script by copying the command from the readme and adjusting the path to the license file as well as the password, which I choose as B in my development context. Why should that change with XM Cloud? Second, I want to make sure that my IIS is shut down before I run the up script. This is to prevent traffic to fail when my containers start. Now I run the up script. When running it for the first time, like I do, it takes a while downloading the required images. Once my CM is available, Sidecore asks me to confirm my device. The code shown on the screen has been shown as well in my console output. Once I confirmed, I see the organization switcher as I'm a member of multiple organizations. If you're only part of one organization, you will not see that screen. Next, the script continues to populate the solar schema and rebuild the indexes. Once done, the CM instance with its dashboard should open automatically in the browser. Let's check for the containers that have been started. We have an SXA starter rendering host, the container for the CM instance, the MS SQL, traffic, and solar to be used for the CM internal search. If we take a look into the content editor, we can see that we have a blank Sitecore installation, at least item-wise, as all our items have been created in XM Cloud, not locally. So we want to transfer the items to our local and to the source repository so every developer has those available. Therefore, we use Sitecore serialization and configure the path that we want to serialize. The file describing what to serialize and what not follow the naming convention .module.json and are expected in the source folder. This is configured in the sidecode.json that is located in the root of your solution. As you can see, there is already a rendering host module.json. The file contains the namespace that describes a unique identifier and then the items it includes in the serialization describing the name of the folder that will store the serialized items in your repository, the path within Sitecore and the scope. The rendering host item was generated in the environment creation process using the SXA starter template and so was the module.json file. As it is only a single item and not the whole tree, the scope was set to single item. If you remove the scope, it will serialize the whole tree as default. Now let's create our own serialization configuration. I create a new module.json file, which I name after the site I'm running. I copy over the file content from the rendering host.module.json as a starting point and configure the items that I want to serialize. First, the templates located in the template slash project. Those have been created while creating the SXA site. We allow create, update and delete operations for those items. Second, the content, meaning all tenants and sites. We also serialize the content while we develop. In future, this has to be changed to not override any changes that authors do. 
so we probably will set the scope to single item later to only sync the root items of our tenants and sites. Last but not least, we configure the media library folders that were created during site creation process. Later, we will configure more paths like renderings, layouts, settings and others once we have those created. Let's not forget to change the namespace of this file to something unique like XM Cloud Demo. Now, as we have configured the items that we want to serialize, let's pull those from your remote XM Cloud environment into the repository. Therefore, we need to make sure that we are logged in and authenticated with our organization. The user.json file contains everything connectivity related. Let's use the XM Cloud login command. We can connect to several environments, may it be in the cloud or locally. Therefore, we use the environment connect command. We can pass the environment ID of our XM Cloud instance to connect to this one. As you can see, the environment has been added to the user.json. Next, we also connect our local environment. Here, we use the connect command of the sidecore CLI with different parameters to identify the environment via the URL and we also pass in the name. The name will identify the environment for later usage. This will be stored again in the user.json. Now that we have the remote and the local environment connected, we can pull the items from the remote environment using the sidecore sir pull or serialize pull command specifying the environment name configured in the user.json. The output shows us what items have been serialized. New folders have been created underneath the item folder containing the content, media library and template items. Let's push these now to the local environment. Therefore, we use the sidecursor push command, specifying the environment name of the local environment. We should now see the items on our local environment. The content, media library, and the templates. But what about Experience Editor? If I try to open Experience Editor, I'll get an error message. This appears as the rendering host used for rendering the app in Experience Editor is not set up for local purposes. In SXA, this can be simply configured within items. Let's go through that. On the settings item, the app name is configured. That has to match the name configured in your package.json file in the source folder of your solution. In the site definition item, we can configure the rendering host being used for the experience editor. This is referenced. Initially, it's referencing the default rendering host service item. This contains the URL to your editing host of the remote XM Cloud instance. However, we can see that this is not the app name we would expect. Let's change it to the correct one. Please note, you can also leave that field blank. That would fall back to the app name of the settings item. So we can override it here. Now you have two possibilities. You can change the existing default rendering host service item or you create a new one. If you create a new one, you have to reference this in the site definition item. Make sure that this item is not overwritten in your cloud instances. If you overwrite the default one, you have to make sure that this is not overwritten in your cloud instances. So I'm creating a new one for now, providing the rendering host URL and the app name. So my app name is demo XM cloud and my rendering host can be derived from the Docker compose file. Here, the rendering host internal URI is configured for the CM. In general, it is HTTP rendering with a port 3000. The server side rendering engine endpoint URL requires the path to the endpoint additionally. After saving, I'll go back to the site definition item and switch to my newly created rendering host service item called local. Let's see if that helped with experience editor.
And there we go. Experience Editor is now working as well. Now we're ready for developing XM Cloud fully locally.